Okay, we're going to start the uh, May the 16th meeting. We'll have the invocation led by Commissioner Hart, Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Firstner, then roll call. Please stand. Eternal, most precious Father, once again, as you've poured your grace and mercy, you remembered us in Okoy. Lord, I pray that you will be with us as we uh, conduct this meeting. As we all come together with our different gifts and talents and experiences you've given us, we pray that we come together in the spirit of unity. Let there be no strife or division among us, Lord. Even though we may disagree on some things, let us never be disagreeable. And God, we thank you for the opportunity to serve your people. Help us to conduct ourselves in a manner that will be pleasing in your sight. And Lord, I say a personal, special prayer for the families of our first responders, our brave policemen and firemen who go out and put their lives on, on the line every day to keep us safe. Remind the family, as their loved ones watch over us, you are watching over them. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Kennedy? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Firstner? Here. Commissioner Hart? Here. Okay, Pres presentations and proclamations. Uh, proclamation for Florida Emancipation Day, May the 20th. I'm going to read that. Is anybody here for this? Okay. I'm going to read it. Whereas our country is made up of great people from all over the world who are declared equal not only in freedom but also in justice. And whereas our nation was concerned on July the 4th, 1776 with the Declaration of Independence, the timeless statement being, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed for their creator with certain un aliable rights, that amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And whereas on January the 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation providing that all persons held as slaves with any state or designated part of a state shall be thence, thenceforth, and forever free. And whereas on May the 20th, 1865, 11 days after the end of the Civil War, and two years after the proclamation first issued by President Abraham Lincoln freed those enslaved in southern states, Union Brigadier General Edward McCook formally announced President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation from the steps of the Nod House in Tallahassee. And whereas on May the 20th, 2023, we celebrate 158 years of freedom. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Commission of the City of Okoy does hereby proclaim May the 20th, 2023, as Florida Emancipation Day, in which whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Okoy, Florida, to be affixed this 16th day of May, 2023. That'll be hanging in the hallways, right, Melody? It's on display on the video. Okay. All right. All right. It's, it's, um, we have uh, Senator Thompson. Huh? Yeah, there she is. Senator Geraldine Thompson. Come on down. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, good evening. And let me congratulate you on your new facility. Uh, this is, is wonderful. Uh, I'm here to continue the celebration of freedom. And as the mayor just indicated, uh, it was May 20th of 1865 when a uh, Union uh, General read the Emancipation Proclamation on the steps of the Knot House in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, but those soldiers continued throughout the South and the last of the slaves to get this news were those in Galveston, Texas, and they received the news on June 19th, 1865. And over the years, June 19th has been contracted and it's simply known as Juneteenth. And there's no conflict between May 20th and June 19th because um, from my perspective until we're all free. None of us are, are free. So we celebrate uh, both of those. But I'm here uh, tonight to ask for your participation in the celebration of Juneteenth. This is a partnership 
uh, that we formed with the city of Okoye probably five years or more uh, at this point. And so we are looking to celebrate Juneteenth on June 17th here in Okoye at uh, Bill Breeze uh, Park. And one of the things we want to do this year that, to my knowledge, has never been done in Central Florida is to focus on Florida's connection to the very first Juneteenth. And a lot of people know Harriet Tubman, and they know uh, that she was the conductor of the Underground Railroad, but they may not know or may have forgotten that she was a soldier, a cook, and a spy for the Union Army, and during the Civil War, she was stationed in Florida. And if you have time later tonight to look on your cell phone and uh, bring up Harriet Tubman in Jacksonville, she was at Fort Clinch, which was a Civil War camp near Fernandina. So she was here when um, Juneteenth came and the very first celebration started. So that gives Florida a unique uh, position and a, new, a unique uh, perspective with regard to Juneteenth. And we're gonna highlight all of that history uh, this year, uh, beginning, as I said, June 17th, 18, 18, 2023. I'm taking us back quite a long ways. And uh, we're looking to hold the celebration at Bill Breeze Park. And uh, my request tonight is that uh, you waive the fee for the park. We're bringing in a stage that we're going to pay for, entertainment, a sound stage, portalettes, et cetera. So that will be our contribution. And our request is that your contribution be the use of Bill Breeze Park. And if you have questions for me, I would be glad to respond to them. All right, thank you, Ms. Senator Thompson. Anybody have any? I, Dan's here, I know, from the Recreation Department. So it's been approved for the dates and all, right? OK, that's good. All right, anybody else have any comments? No? All right, we need a motion or cons consensus? Consensus is fine. Consensus, everybody in favor of that? Yes. yes. All right. Aye, aye. Yes, you got it. Everything's great. Thank you, and I'm glad to be home. Uh, session adjourned May 5th, <laughs> oh, and uh, it's good to be back in Central Florida with friendly faces. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, you, Senator. All right. Well, you have the um, presentation on the audit results for fiscal year ending September 30, 2022, and the GFOA. Is this Mr. Gnu and Purvis, correct? Uh, Mr. Gano is there. Uh, my name is Tim Westgate, audit partner with the engagement. Just going to try to, there we go. We switched the screen there real quick. Um, so if I may, jump right in. So Mayor, uh, Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to, to present. Uh, this is the final stage in the audit process. Everyone should have received a paper or digital copy of the audited financial statements, your annual comprehensive annual your annual comprehensive financial report. And so we have already reviewed with management the results of the audit, and today we're just going to touch on a couple of highlights and save you from uh, reading tonight all 200 and some pages that's in that book. So touching on those, quick introduction, my name is Tim Westgate, audit partner on the engagement. Uh, Matt Gano is senior audit manager on the engagement. Uh, not with us this evening from the leadership team, Mr. Mike Sandstrom is over the IT aspect of the financial audit. We make up the leadership team of your audit. And we are primarily here to touch on those highlights and answer any questions you have. Before we get into those particulars, we did want to take a moment to recognize the city's participation in the GFOA's Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting. And what you have on your screen there uh, mentions it's for 2021. That's not a typo. It does look back a prior year. What that program is, it's formed by the GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association in the United States, and has become an international program as well. And it was formed to encourage and assist state and local governments to go beyond the minimum reporting requirements of generally accepted accounting principles and expand in the spirit of transparency and additional disclosure and to then submit their annual comprehensive financial report to the program for extensive review. It's sent out, uh, reviewed by academics, other professionals, 
And we are pleased to say that for 2021, the city received that award for participating in that program. And we do expect that this September 30th, 2022, uh, will also receive that award again. So great commendation to the city for both participating in that program and receiving that, war that award. Looking at 2022 is really what you may want to hear about tonight. So touching on the results of the audit, these audit uh, requirements are met. The requirements under Flor the Florida statute, rules of the Auditor General, your secondary bond market, lenders, federal and state granting agencies for your external reporting requirements, this meets those requirements. The first category on there is about the auditor's opinion. There's a relatively lengthy letter in there that comes from the auditors that talks about uh, reminders that management and the city is responsible for the financial statements. The auditors is responsible for issuing an opinion on those financial statements from our audit. The main thing you wanna hear, what is that opinion? It is a clean and unmodified opinion. That is the highest level of assurance that you can receive for financial statements. So again, commending the city in achieving that accomplishment. There's other reports in there that I'm just gonna to touch on, probably about 20 pages worth if we were to hit on each one. For internal control and compliance, we look at that in respect for the audit, internal control over financial reporting, non-compliance matters that may have a material effect on the financial statements. Pleased in those category, uh, categories, it's standard language reports you will not find reports of material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, non-compliance matters. So again, standard language, clean reports in that regard. Uh, we do have a discussion item, but that is falls in the realm of a recommendation and we'll touch on that in a few moments, but is not that significant realm. Under Florida statutes, we also issue a report about compliance with the requirements for local governments for investments. That as well is a clean report. The city was deemed to comply for an investment of funds. And the management letter that's issued under rules of the Auditor General, if you had issues of deteriorating financial condition, inability to pay bills, make debt payments, matters like that, those would be addressed in that letter. Uh, pleased that it is a clean letter in that regard. It did not have uh, findings uh, related to that. The final group of auditor's reports that we'll touch on is related to federal awards that the city receives. As part of your audit, you did receive the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds. Of course, anytime you receive federal or additional state funding, there's often extra strings attached, and one of those is an audit requirement related to compliance. And with that uh, recognition, we look at the various compliance requirements which were very complex coming out during the time. Many times the funds came well in advance of clarity of how do you spend it? What are you allowed to spend it for? What are the compliance requirements? As part of the audit, we looked at the compliance over the 10 million of the funds that were reported during that fiscal year. And it is as well a clean report um, related to that. So pleased that even though it was uh, sort of grabbing your crystal ball to predict what the compliance requirements were going to be. Um, in hindsight, everything worked out well for the city in that regard. So again, to save pages from reading every page in there, just a couple of financial highlights that we wanted to touch on. Changes in fund balance is sort of the net income aspect. Overall, your governmental funds category had a net increase of 7.3 million as planned uh, through the year uh, with a combined ending fund balance of 72 million. Um, nothing alarming in that regard. It shows a, a healthy position uh, for the governmental funds. For your proprietary funds, the enterprise funds, touching on a couple categories there, water and wastewater had a change in that position of 7.8 million. The working capital, that is your current assets over your current liabilities, had 25 million, which is a, a healthy position when you look forward for future planned projects and just routine cash flows. Solid waste fund is one that we did want to just draw to your attention. That one did result in a negative working capital um, and a net a reduction in that position of 37 million. So that's just a fund that we recommend keep your sights on that one as it moves forward into the future. 
Still flashing back to that page, that first category is related to the American Rescue Act uh, plan funding, the 10 million that I already cited that was subject to audit. There's also 14 million remaining at the end of September 30th, 2022, that is to be recognized and earned into future years. The solid waste fund, again, just touching on that one, did have, uh, in addition to its negative working capital, it did have a deficit net position of 937. And then just keeping an awareness out there for the fiduciary funds. As everyone knows, the investment market was very difficult as of September 30th of 22. Uh, the fund recognized for the year a loss of roughly 21 million. Uh, both the general, uh, general employees plan and the police and fire did maintain uh, funding over 80%, between 81 and 83%. Um, but with the loss in investment values, of course, uh, hope, hopefully investment uh, will recover. Uh, if they don't in a longer term, uh, you know, what's the outcome? What's the longer term deal you may run into is additional funding requirements into those plans. But again, not, not findings, just uh, topics for discussion, things to keep an eye out towards. There were some new GASBs, that's the uh, standard setter uh, for the year. There were some new requirements for lease reporting. Uh, that's just, I'll skim over that one quickly. It's sort of a technical matter that doesn't excite a lot of people. Uh, we did have some restatement of the prior period financial statements. Uh, had some re recognition of claims payable related to the prior year. Some unbilled revenues that would have been as of September of 21. And then just the recognition of the ARPA funding from the 21 into the 22 year. So there were some prior period adjustments in there. Some of the other audit mat, uh, matters that the standards want us to discuss with city commissions when we meet with you. Um, financial statements uh, are uh, neutral, consistent, and clear with reporting between periods. We did not have disagreements with management. And one of the main ones that I like to cite is that last bullet point is difficulties in performing our audit. Had we encountered them, uh, this would be the time to talk about it. Uh, pleased to say we got great cooperation. As you may recall, this was our first year in as your auditors, and that is always a transition time. Uh, we're very appreciative of the cooperation that we got. So with that, I do want to thank commission, management, <clears throat> sorry, the city, especially Mrs. Roberts in the finance department, who has to put up with us the most when we come in and say, show us this, show us that. Uh, we received great cooperation uh, throughout the process. While we did not have findings, Material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, there are things that we discuss. And we did have some recommendations that are written in the report, and that was just related to the year-end closing routine. Uh, time, timeliness of bank reconciliation, the year-end adjustment process, some inventory uh, observation processes, and some capital asset reporting. Again, not findings, just recommendations. These have been reviewed with finance, and we believe the city is already undertaking the actions uh, to implement those recommendations. So we're, we're thankful for that. So with that, uh, we will conclude. I know you have a full meeting tonight, so we'll invite any questions or comments that you may have related to the audit or anything related to the financial statements for the city. All right, thank you very much, commissioners. Start with you, Commissioner King, do you have anything? I just have one question. Yes. Um, uh, the last slide, the uh, the issues that you raised with the finance department. Right. Um, in your uh, cover letter, you also raised questions, recommendations for management to review uh, GASB 96, 94, right. uh, stormwater waste fund. Um, you mentioned that management was already looking at that short list you have. Have you received feedback from management about these additional For the other matters, I, I don't know the details on the stormwater side of things. Uh, GASB 96 is looking into the year that you're in now, um, but the, that is like the lease standard. It's a new GASB that's come out, um, and we, we do know the city is already looking forward into how that standard's gonna be implemented uh, related to subscription-based. It's the, the last standard uh, related to uh, physical objects, long-term leases, the new standard is related to IT arrangements that may extend out more than one year into the future. But yes, I do know the city's looking at uh, that part for sure. Thank you. 
Mr. Mr. Fersner. I'd just like to congratulate uh, the finance director, Ms. Roberts, and her entire financial uh, department team. Another year, very well done. You've proven yourself over and over again. Well done. Commissioner Hart? Yes, what's one question? The, uh, with regards to the investments in the uh, retirement funds, are the losses in line with the market and with other funds that size? Um, it, it, in our, uh, we're not financial advisors, right. but just from an audit perspective and other trends, um, so much so that there's another presentation we did that was almost the exact same number and same percentage. So okay. uh, and, very common, um, losses weren't a surprise and of that size um, really followed my own investment, <laughs> my own retirement plan personally. So uh, no, nothing out of the norm there. It's really <clears> just <throat> discussion item and heads up. Yeah, and I got some tears on right. mine, too. So right, <laughs> exactly. And for the record, there's been a lot of talk about needing an audit, needed that. From your personal opinion, from your professional opinion, do you see any reason, any red flags that would cause an alarm to say we need to dig deeper? Um, we, we would have reported those in there to you. Um, so should those matters come up, um, depending upon the urgency of them, it would have been when we brought them up, but they would have been today or before today. Um, so if there were matters that we felt rose to that level, uh, we would have brought them up to you today or before today. So, yeah. Thank you for your service and your openness, and I really appreciate what Thank you've done you. for the city. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's really amazing to me that the um, $21 million don't sound a lot, I guess, when you're dealing with the city, but to me, it sounds like a lot because what little bit I got in investments scares me to death of what they took. Right. So that's $21 million come out of what investment accounts we had is the loss in value, right? So not, not, mm -hmm. not distributions, just loss in value yeah. of what you're invested in. Mm -hmm. uh, again, not a financial advisor, but with what's happened with interest rates, um, yeah. reduced uh, values everywhere. So. Mm -hmm. the, um, there was one other thing on the ARPA. That back in that slide, it was 300-something thousand. They just leave off the zero, zero, zero at the end. Is that why they did that? Do you remember which? It was back on one of the first couple of slides under the ARPA. It says 26,672. Is that listed in okay, million? So, so that's the fund balance. Fund that's balance. the balance at the very end of the year. Um, so that is so what is not recognized there, and it's just a function of the accounting, is that you do have 14 million yeah, that's what I thought. in that fund yeah. of cash, but that is instead of falling to fund balance, is reported as um, a liability. Okay. Until you spend it, you owe it back. Kind of um, so it's not yours until you spend it. Right. Okay. So that will become, I got you. That'll become part of your fund balances right. as you spend it. Yeah. We appreciate great it question. very much. Good Thank observation. You. you did a great job. We appreciate it. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Good. None? Thank you very much. All right. Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I got a couple more uh, things we've done in presentations, but I'm going to move up. The one item off of the, of the uh, consent agenda for the uh, Okoy High School homecoming parade. Let these young people come up I tried. and uh, <laughs> come up to the podium and tell us what they need. Hello, I'm from Okoy High School. I'm the student body president, and this is Bailey Castle, our vice president of student life. Um, last year, we planned the Okoy parade, which went through downtown Okoy near like DG Donuts. Um, we involved our organizations from the school where they came out and they held posters like saying like what they do and their members. We involved also sports um, and then we also had the court so we had three cars which held the court and two other organizations and we're just looking to see if we could use the downtown area. I yeah. think it was great last year that was yeah. great to see that happen again after a lot of years. We appreciate it very much for your effort. Anybody have any comments on it? Huh? So I, I don't think we have a problem. Everybody got consent on that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, everybody's great. Thank you. All right. So you're going to send it out on do some app posters or something? Yeah, we do. Um, I have on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but. I didn't think otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> What's the date? September, September 6th. 6th. Right? Yes. All right. Well, listen, we'll be looking forward to it. So thank you very much. Y'all did a great job last year. We thank you, Will, this year, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it very much.
All right, let's go back here now. Um, Mr. Jamie Douglas. What? Yeah. Stamp for parts. Well, I'm going to do that after I do this. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. All right, good evening. So uh, the Montier team, going back to uh, December 6th, when we voted on the memorandum of understanding for the Ocoee Regional Sports Complex, we've been working diligently with uh, city officials, Craig Shadricks, Mike Rumer, and everybody that's been involved, along with Chevron and our legal team, Scott Cookson. And we have finally fulfilled all the obligations to that memorandum of understanding and finalized the Chevron contract along with the uh, development agreement so, and this happened on Friday, I believe. So it was too late to be on the agenda for this evening, so we're here tonight to uh, request a special meeting to discuss uh, these approvals uh, to sign both agreements and contracts. And uh, the reason in doing so is we have uh, already went under contract with private parcels that are gonna be included in the uh, complex and uh, we have those closings uh, coming up at the end of next month. So we're looking to um, have this meeting so we can solidify uh, the entire project so we can feel comfortable in, in those closings to move forward. Before, all right, before we ask questions, I've asked about doing it Thursday. Everybody's agreed except Commissioner Wilson. We haven't discussed it yet, but we need to do it Thursday night for 30 minutes or so for a special meeting. What time? Is it, what time's good for everybody? Six? Six thirty? Six? No, it has to be early. It has to be six at the latest. What time? It has to be six at the latest. Yeah, that's it. Six. Thursday, then. Yeah. Otherwise, I can't do it. Yeah, six o'clock. So is that good for you? Absolutely. All right, I appreciate it because I'm going to be out of town next week, so I wanted to get this. We need to move, keep okay. moving on this. So, all right, commissioners, anybody have any comments? You can go 530? I can, if they will. Yeah. Everybody okay, Scott? Yeah. All right, 530. Absolutely. So put that down, Melody, 530 Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? I think it's great. Anybody That's else it. have any comments? I'm great. That's it. All right. Thank See you, you Thursday time. night, 530. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. All right, staff reports. I have nothing this evening, Mayor. All righty. Public comments. I have. I had two here, and I have no more, so is anybody else? I have no comments from anybody, so we'll move on from that. All right, consent agenda. Now, we pulled item in three, and we did a consensus on that, so that's off. Let's, let's vote on that one. All right, we'll vote on it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's get a motion for all of them. Yeah. Can I hear a motion for the consent agenda? I make a motion that we have. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as stated. All right, motion made by Commissioner Hart to approve all of them, all five including the Oak Way High School road closure. So here's second. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Wilson. Any more comments? If not, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. First reading of ordinance, item number six. First reading of ordinance ratifying resolution 2023-06 to rescind the city's call for a special election for June the 13th, 2023 and calling for the general City election date to coincide with the Orange County Municipal Election Day and the Presidential Pre Preference Primary Date of March the 19th, 2024. You got yeah, I'll just read the title to the ordinance. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, ratifying City of Ocoee Resolution 2023-06, rescinding the city's call for a special election for the District 4 Commission seat scheduled for June 13th, 2023 calling instead for a general city election and scheduling such election on March 19, 2024 to coincide with the Orange County Municipal Election Day and the Presidential Preference Primary. For the election for the District 4 Commission seat, proposed amendments to the city charter and any other matters requiring a municipal election, providing for qualifying period and schedule for runoff election to be applied in conjunction with said election, designating the Orange County Canvassing Board as the City Canvassing Board for the general city election, providing for severability and a savings clause, and providing for conflicts and an effective date. 
Okay. That's it'll be back on March. No, 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 no. It'll be back on June the thirteenth for the second reading. All right. June sixth. June the sixth or thirteenth. Oh no, I'm, re I'm reading the election. You're right. June the sixth. Thank you. <laughs> You're right. Okay. All right. And if anybody has any public comments on that, it'll be on June the sixth. All right, number seven, second reading of ordinance, public hearing. Second reading of ordinance from Siri, office building, Market Street, right of way, annexation and rezoning to PUD. Zoning manager Whitfield. Or Zoning manager Mr. Whitfield's Mr. out Brewer. with an illness I'm covering. Yes, this is an item that was approved uh, back as a plan unit development. It's on the south side of Old Winter Garden Road. Uh, it's uh, east of Hempel. And it's a rezoning and annexation of a remnant right of way that, uh, as part of the PD, it was condi conditioned upon this right of way being vacated by Orange County since it was under Orange County's ownership and maintenance. That vacation happened under Orange County's process. And so we're simply annexing and bringing in this parcel of land to the city limits and giving it the zoning. The, the site plan for Siri just has some parking and buffering in this area. Nothing else is being approved with this other than bringing the strip of land into the city limits. And I recommend approval on the annexation and rezoning. Yeah, let me go ahead and read the title to these two ordinances. First is the annexation ordinance. This is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.372 acres of vacated public right-of-way, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, and the Joint Planning Area Agreement. Providing for and authorizing the update of official city maps. Providing direction to the city clerk. Providing for severability. Repealing inconsistent ordinances and providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, assigning the zoning classification of City of Ocoee PUD on certain real property containing approximately 0.372 acres a vacated public right-of-way pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. All right. So we'll open the public hearing. Anybody in the public have any comments on item number seven for the ordinance for Siri office? No comments, I'll bring it back to the uh, dice. Anybody up on the dice? Commissioners, anybody have comments? All righty, then I need a motion. Make that motion to approve. Let's do a motion oh, on we the annexation. Yeah. Annexation in zone. Motion for annexation. All right, motion made by Commissioner Wilson for the annexation. You're here second. Second. Mr. Commissioner Hart. Mm -hmm. All right, any more comments on that? If not, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right, I need a motion for uh, rezoning. Make that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson. I hear a second. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Kennedy. No more comments, let's vote. All right, no public hearings. We're gonna go to the regular agenda. Item A, appointment of five members, two alternate members, and a facilitator to the Charter Review Commission. Who's going to handle this one? City clerk. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to type at the same time. Good evening. At the May 2nd meeting, it was requested for the City Commission to provide names and or applications to our office by Friday, May 12th. Applications that were received were um, included in your packet. Two additional applications were added um, on Friday, which was the deadline that was for Lou Forges and Derek Chacon. And we also received um, the following names from the mayor on Friday, as well as the application that has been printed out and placed before you. Um, the names that were provided were for Fanny McTavish, Kelton Butler, and Adam Lovejoy. You have an application for Adam Lovejoy before you. Commissioner Hart has also provided a name of um, resident Jim Sills that he would like to um, consider. 
Staff is requesting the commission appoint five members and two alternate members and also appoint attorney Richard Gellard with Fishback Dominic to be the facilitator board attorney um, whose bio was provided in your packet. Uh, can I ask you a question? I'm sorry. The, the, the first one you read out, on I, was it uh, Jerry Chacon? So there's... Um, Commissioner Firstner had provided an application for Derek Chacon. Derek. Derek. What's his name? Derek, Derek Chacon. Derek. Okay. Yeah. I thought you said Jerry. I was going to say. Sorry. No, he lived here. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So, any questions or any? Does, any? does that remember appoint one person from their district? Is that? You can appoint them. You can appoint them from your district or wherever. Okay. So. I'm gonna, I'm you gonna, got yours? I have mine. Who, did, did they read yours off? Mine is, um, sorry, <laughs> just shouldn't touch this thing. Um, Tom Laurie, yeah. Thomas Laurie from District 2. Yeah, all right. Is one that I would like to appoint. Yeah. So I, everybody's got their appointees' names, so is it, we just need a, do we need a motion on it? Let's list them out and then um, vote all of them, do a motion for all of them. All right, she needs to read the names. So we can go down um, for District 1, Commissioner Kennedy. Who is your? Uh, Lou Forges. All right. District 2. Is Thomas Laurie? Mayor? I have, I have three. Uh, Fanny. Um, I'm Kelton Butler. Mike Chip. What? what? You have Kelton Butler and Adam that. Lovejoy. Adam Lovejoy and Kelton Butler. Okay. All right. Commissioner Firstner. Derek Chacon. And Commissioner Hart. I have Jim Seals. Jim. Jim Seals. Seals. Jim Seals. So two of those are alternates. Yep. The mayor. It says the mayor shall appoint first and second second alternate member. Um, mayor, who will be the first? Second. Can alternate. I tell you tomorrow? <laughs> we have five members plus two alternates. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, that gives us seven. You need an odd number. Right. So, just questioning if each one of us put one on from our districts. I did. I did I mean, one from the mayor slot, and then so I got to do two, two alternates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, oh, I see. Okay. I would. I would put a. Um, uh, Fanny and um, and uh, Kelton. Kelton. As, that, so oh. Fanny's first alternate, Kelton the second alternate. Right. And Adam Lovejoy will be the regular member. Make regular one, yes. Okay. You got them all. So, yeah. So we can do I don't a, see one of those names. Huh? I see. Uh, or just Lowry. I don't see who Butler. I see uh, Captain Butler. Or just Lomnick Lowry Moyer. I don't see Butler. Was there an application? For yes. That? Okay. So we've got Tom Lowry, Lou Forges, Adam Lovejoy, Kelton Butler. I'm sorry, Derek. Chacon. 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 Then Jim Sills, and the two alternates are. Am I correct? Kelton. Two owners are Kelton Butler and Fannie McDavish. Okay. Just Wait, who? That was the, no. those are the two Kelton's I didn't see. Okay. Okay, I'm just Wait, trying was to... Jim Sills one of them? I thought yes. it was Fanning. Jim Sills is his appointee. <laughs> We need a motion. Do we have to re read the names? Or just so, a motion? a motion for <laughs> Tom Lowry, Lou Forges, what is Fanny? Fanny McTavish. Fanny McTavish. Um, as first alternate, Adam Lovejoy, Kelton Butler as second alternate, Derek Chacon, and Jim Sills. Correct. As and regular. The, and um, Rick Geller as the yeah. and Rick Geller as the facilitator board attorney. Yeah. 
All right. We need a motion on motion. I need a motion for I'll those. Make, I'll make that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson for the appointees of the names read into the record. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Seconded by Co Commissioner Scott Kennedy. Any more comments? All right. Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right. It's very important that we thank these folks because oh, yeah. this is going to be a very tight um, schedule, I would assume, that's going to happen on this and the time and effort that's going to be put into it. We appreciate it. Can I just ask, Mayor, did that motion, I didn't hear it in the motion, but um, were you addressing the um, appointment of Mr. Geller as yeah. a facilitator? Okay. Yeah. okay. Laurie read it out at the end. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. All right. Appointment of members to the Human Relations Diversity Board. City Clerk, Melanie Sibbett. So at the May, May 2nd meeting, the City Commission appointed four residents to the HRDB board. Um, staff is requesting at this meeting that one resident be provided by Commissioner Hart and, at, and two at-large members be appointed. Um, applications provided with this staff report um, are additional applications that were received throughout the course of reestablishing the, the board. So those applications were in your packet. Mm -hmm. I already pointed. Yeah. All right. So now we need to read those names off, right? I think Commissioner Hart um, has a name that he wants to provide it in. You will have to decide on the two um, at-large members. The four members have already been Correct. selected. Correct. And, and that Read is, them out again. I'm sorry. No, the that's four. okay. So the four members that have already been appointed, um, Bill Maxwell, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Vinny Singh, Michelle Cummings, Oops. and Josh Cease. Who was the second one? Vinny Singh. Vinny Singh. Vinny, right. Vinny, Vinny Singh. Singh. Yeah, Vinny. Yes, All right. Michelle Cummings and Josh so Cease. So you, Mr. Cease. Hart, needs Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Baird. I'm um, delighted that we had, I think, more applicants from District 4 than any other district. So it shows the interest in diversity in our district, and I'm very proud of that fact. And uh, I had the, the pleasure and the struggle of going through a lot of qualified people uh, for a job. And I encourage those who didn't get selected to continue to work for the board because it's an open forum. You can come in and uh, state your opinion, state your dreams. A lot of the, especially a couple of young men are working a lot with the youth, and I love to see that. I love seeing people working with young young men, especially because so many of them don't have a mentor, so I encourage them to do that. But um, based on what I've seen, I'm going to go with Dr. James Moyer uh, for my selection. He's um, an advocate. Uh, anybody who's been in the court for a period of time knows he, he loves diversity. He's well-trained, well-qualified. <laughs> I've worked with him, had the pleasure of, uh, he, he and uh, my wife and I have working with him in the past, and I think he'll do a great job. Once again, I thank the applicants. And I encourage diversity in the city and in our boards. I love to see more women involved. I love to see people from all races involved. We're better together. So I would really like to see that. And once again, thanks to all the applicants. I couldn't be proud of our district, and I look forward to great success with the board. Thank you. Okay, so that gives us the... We can approve Mr. Moyer on the board, and then we need to select two alternates for that. Okay. Somebody... Let's put up the names. Somebody need to. Um. Can you put up on the screen the other names that were turned in? Put in. No. I don't. Here's, here's one of the applications. I'm mean, just going through them. They're here. Which is district. He is district. There's three. Three. You didn't appoint Johnny, um, Mr. Firstner. You didn't appoint Johnny. Is it Johnny Millen? Millen? No. He had applied mm -hmm. previous no. to uh, my selection. Okay. No, I just but didn't know. I'm looking through. I think. No, yeah, he had I would. I would John, John Cease. John. I'd offer who? his name up as an alternate. John Cease is his appointment. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was They're both named. Uh, Josh Cease. Excuse me. That's who he appointed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are you going there? Okay, we have. Okay. Well, Mr. Moyer's out of that, so. Right. I, I would say. Oh, okay, Marcus. How many do we need? Two? You got Mr. Riggins there, and you got Mr. Millen. The District yeah, 4 is Mr. Riggins. 
Um, and who well, I, would, I'm just I can't make the motion, but I, you got Mr. Millen, who he, he did ask earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I think I did talk with him. And then you got Jason Millen. Uh -huh. Jay Carr, Harry Singer on the list that's on your appointment yeah. for members. Mm -hmm. So. I'd oh, say, I'd, I'd, I'd say Mr. Mellon and. Uh, M Mellon or Mellon? Mellon. Jason Mellon. Okay. Have you got one on there? No, I've already got, oh. I've already appointed Michelle Cummings. I'm, I'm just saying if anybody else, we can come up with a name. I'd say Johnny Millen. I think he did come one night to put his yeah, name he, in. I, I, I thought he was more yeah. interested in doing it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'd say we could vote on him first, Johnny Millen. Yeah, in District I, I was supporting three. Him. Huh? District 3? Yeah. I've can we vote on him first? Sure, you can do those separately. You want to make a motion there, Commission? Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Mr. Millen. All right. The motion day. made. Do I hear a second? Second. Well, make sure you As say an Johnny. Alternate. Make sure you say Johnny. Johnny. We, we have second. Jason and we have oh, Johnny, yeah. but they sound similar. Uh, second by Commissioner Kennedy. Any more comments on them? Let's vote on that one. As an alternate. As, As an al alternate. Oh, that's Johnny. All right. M and Millen. then. Um, Jason Mellon. Jason Mellon. District 4. Commissioner Hart. You going to make that motion? I'll do it. Uh, I'll make a motion to appoint Jason Mellon as the second alternate. You hear second? I'll second that. S seconded by Mr. Firstner. Commissioner First. I'm sorry. That's no more comments? Let's vote. All right. Still need to vote on Mr. Moyer as a... Oh, we still have which one was Mr. Moore? I'll I'll second uh, Commissioner Hart's nomination of Jim Moore. Uh, okay. Who made Mr. Who made Mr. Hart? I'm sorry, we skipped over that. No more comments. Let's vote on him. Get him in there. All right. That does it. Okay. Is, is it all done? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Now we're down to number ten, which is notification of initial three-year term ending for two regular members of one. One's alternate member on the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, and um, so I would, uh, I would, uh, I, I can't make the motion again, but Joel Keller's put in again, and Joel was on there, and it's been on there. I think we messed up when we reappointed that last one, because we used to have where the alternate would move up to that mm -hmm. slot. We didn't do that. I don't think that was in the... When we then you, the ordinance. I know, but that's yeah, you're, you're correct, Mayor. It's not in there now either, so you could do it by um, by edict or whatever you want to do until we change it. If we want to change that at some point, um, yeah, there's like nothing that. that says that that member automatically moves up into a vacant full member's we position. We have to go through the process time. first, though, right? So you can consider that when that vacancy comes open. If you have somebody yeah. in the alternate position, you can so always consider So we can go ahead and name him as the alternate, then... We can move Joel Keller up, but we have to come back later and change the ordinance the way the um, alternate should be moved into a vacant position. Yeah, I think the other it's the other issues we'd have to look at were if you had a year as alternate and are you going to fulfill the remainder of your term as alternate as a full member? Or are you going to re fulfill the remainder of the term of the person that you are replacing? I would, like, so, I, would, I would personally like to see him get that fill that full time. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike Rumor, Development Services Director, just food for thought. That's why I put my name on this regular item. Uh, the terms that are up tonight are the final three year. You get two consecutive three year terms, then you have to sit out three years. Uh, so the terms that are tonight are the final three year term. Next year at this time, we will be select, we will be filling the spots of two two of the PNZ members that have served the two three-year terms and they will not be eligible. So next year you will not have any opportunity to reappoint. Whoever is selected next year will have the opportunity to serve two terms if they are up after their first three-year term. So I just want to disclose this is the final three-year term. So if you, if in, in that time we can also adjust uh, how we do the alternate. I just do want to state that we used to have five members and seven members and two alternates. We made the alternates permanent members. We had nine members and that was part of the reconstruction of this board to keep it to five. But then we wanted to do an alternate. Uh, so just wanted to throw that out there that this is a final three-year term. 
next year we will have to find two new people that would have the opportunity to serve six years. Yep. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, with our ordinance, okay, tonight it looks like Brad Lomnick is up for June. His last three-year term. His last three-year term. So would Same be with Mellon. Jason Mellon would be left. The question I have, which I, I have no problem reappointing them, okay, but when you start looking at, like, let's just use the alternate, Joel Keller is sitting in that, that's his first term, but he actually he never would really be, had he, a term. He didn't have a full member term. So commission, So the person, uh, Mr. Keller, yeah. if he was to remain the alternate, he could run, you could, you could move him up next year because we have to fill the spot. And we'll, at any time, you could put his name in the hat, then he would be able to serve two three-year terms as a full member. This does not eat into that. So he... The Clerk, do you have anything you want to add? Okay, go ahead. Um, you may recall I was a keen observer of the last vacancy on PNZ since it was my seat. Um, and what I remember is when that seat came before the commission to be filled, Joel Keller was told that as the alternate he couldn't become the permanent member. Um, Automatically move up. Yeah. Or be voted up and a new member was voted to fill my seat. I want to make sure we're not planning to do something that a year from now we're going to be told again we can't do. Because I know, we were I know clearly nothing told, in there that we says you could not told do that. that. Member Keller couldn't, that the charter said that the vacancy had to be replaced and he stayed as the alternate. That was made clear at that commission meeting. So the Let's let's, I don't break, recall. Let, yeah. let's do the two of the, the two that's uh, Brad Lomnick and Jason Mellon. Let's yeah. do if we're going to vote for them or not vote for them. Then that leaves the third one. Then we can decide on that too. But okay. we could do a motion where we appoint each one of them individually, and then go f figure out what we're going to do in the third slot. You want Who to do is that third person? Okay, I'll make a motion to reappoint uh, Member Lomnick to P and Z. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Kennedy to appoint Brad Lomnick. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Any more discussion? Let's vote. A talented young man. Next. <laughs> Next. Uh, I'll make a motion to reappoint uh, Member Mellon to PNZ. Who is it? Jason, Jason Mellon. Jason Mellon. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson. Any more comments? If not, let's vote. Motion carries you then. Now the third one. Who, who's well, the third one? Well, we really don't have a third one because... I thought he said three. Alternate. The alternate. The alternate. The alternate. Yeah. But does that count We're going to have to move Joel Joel's Keller. It doesn't count as a regular member. It doesn't count as any term. No. So only as the alternate. He can, be he, he can only be an alternate for, for six years or a full member. So this does not take credit from his... If he were to become a full member, the alternate position does not take credit away from that. So I can't make the motion. So I'll make the motion for Joel Keller. Motion, motion. Or, um, alternate, alternate member. Alternate member. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Oh. Well, we got three second. seconds. Second and third. Yes. I want to. <laughs> uh, well, you want to talk first? I'd, I I want to condition that on the basis that we're going to allow him that that's not going to preclude him from becoming a full member if the seat comes available. That can be attached to the motion, right? So next year, when we have a vacancy, you want to make Move. sure that Keller yeah. is not precluded from Right. Yes. Okay. Make sure he understands that too, Millie. And we can, in the meantime, we can look at language that moves an alternate up automatically. Yeah, that's what um, it used to be. Yeah, I think we'll be bringing that back as an amendment yeah. to the ordinance. Um, yeah. Clarifying yeah. those things. Yeah. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So, you you made the motion. We have three seconds. So yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> I think it carries. Mr. First. <laughs> I think it carries for three seconds. <laughs> Let's vote. <laughs> motion carries unanimously. All right. We're down to number eleven. 
discussion and direction from the city commission about the procurement of a city attorney. Winter day. Yes, Mayor. So with the resignation of Mr. Cookson, um, staff felt it appropriate at this time to ask uh, for the commission to authorize the procurement process for a new attorney or firm to fulfill the role of city attorney. Um, we think it'd also be the time right now to discuss any specific qualifications or requirements you want us to include when we put out a request for letters of interest. Since the attorney reports to you all, we're, right. we want your authorization to go out and start the recruitment for a new attorney. Basically. All right, we'll open the discussion. Anybody want to start? Has it changed from 2011 or 2000? I think I read what was on the uh, in the report here that what we did in 2009 or 2011. Mm -hmm. 2011. Has our has our needs changed? I, I don't time? think so. I think, um, you know, depending on how many responses we get, we may recommend you bring two or three firms in and have some type of um, presentation from them. And I, I think that would be the time to ask if there's any specific uh, issues that you'd like them to be able to address or anything like that. Is that, a, is that agreeable to everybody? Yes. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. We need a Motion for that? We appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Do I hear a motion? We have a timeline on it? Um, motion? I would think um, when we get the, the new um, request for letters of interest, we could probably get that out within a week or two. We'd probably like to keep it open for at least 30 days. Maybe get the word out that we do. We are looking for uh, firms to apply or individuals. And then after that, we would come back with um, some type of um, recommendation for you as to how to evaluate them. So a right. month or two, and because of the lead time on the meetings, I'd say probably yeah. July or August would yeah. probably be the best time. All right, so did I get a motion? Um, I'll make that motion for us to move All forward right. with the procurement of a city attorney. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson, seconded by Commissioner Kennedy. Any more comments? No more comments, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Com comments from commissioners. Commissioner Kennedy. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'm filing uh, my second commissioner report this month. It's been a great month, very exciting. Um, just I'll highlight a couple of things. Um, I've continued to attend the Citizens Public Safety Academy every Wednesday night. And uh, I encourage you, if you have the time and interest or if you want to volunteer on one of the advisory boards for the fire department or the police department to uh, take that academy. It's not only been informative, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've got to uh, shoot tasers. And uh, we used the jaws of life and cut up a car and did an extrication uh, demonstration. It's, it's great. And there's a lot of uh, really talented, wonderful people serving those departments. Um, I've also continued my tour of the city and meeting with directors of departments. This month I visited uh, with the fire chief and the police chief and the city manager, Rob Frank, and addressed uh, issues for District 1. Um, of course, the number one issue remains traffic. Um, there's a complete Lakewood update and Clark Road update, which I'm including. It affects District 1, and also an update on Ocoia Popka Road. Um, I would like to ask for a consensus based on my conversation with the city manager um, that he be authorized to explore the possibility of the county transferring the road to the city. Uh, there may be some significant advantages with uh, potentially widening that road and simultaneously to investigate the Orange County transportation spending in Ocoee. Uh, we suspect that for some time we're not getting our fair share. That's come up uh, in several commissions over the years. Um, I would like to authorize city staff to go pursue trying to put and quantify that dollar amount that we're not getting. So uh, would there be a consensus for that, Mr. Mayor? Uh, 
Anybody, everybody else good on that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Reed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, also, uh, as a lot of you know, we have a, a temporary fire station on Adair uh, that would serve the North District 1 and District 4. We have $5 million in ARPA funding available. Um, I'd also like consensus to direct staff to move forward with finalizing the location and forming a private-public partnership to construct that new facility, um, if that's okay. Is that it? Yes, sir. You want a consensus on that, too? I do. I was told he required that. All right. Same thing. Everybody consensus on Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Um, last, uh, I attended a lot of events this month, the uh, City of Ocoee's Volunteer Appreciation Dinner, which was great. We appreciate all the volunteers of all the boards. Um, we had a great Cinco de Mayo block party. Um, I think we should probably consider uh, more of those. We shut down the street. It was terrific. It was uh, largely attended and, and just fantastic. And um, this Saturday, I'm attending the Ocoee Police Department community picnic at Freedom Park. That's from uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday. and. Um, and I'm going to disclose I made a $100 donation from discretionary funds to the Ocoee High School for Senior Awards Night. Um, my complete comments will be available uh, on the city website. And uh, thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Wilson. Yes, um, thank you. On um, May 25th, let's remember that we're having our Memorial Day event, which will be held right here at the Lakeshore Center at 11 o'clock, usually goes till about 12.30, so we hope you can attend. And um, it's nice to hear that the Orange County Clerk's Office is going to start opening once a month on a Saturday here in Ocoee for um, services such as marriage license, ceremonies, passports, and payments, of thir and payments on the third Saturday of each month for the rest of the year. So again, they're gonna be open here in Ocoee um, starting June 17th, and every month they do have a list of dates through the end of the year that they'll be open. So again, that makes it more accessible for our residents to get there on Saturday, especially if you work. Uh, I believe that's all I have to, at this point. Thank you. Commissioner, thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Firstner. They already mentioned the <laughs> Freedom Park <laughs> community picnic and the Memorial Day ceremony, so I don't have to cover those two. But uh, in response to Ms. Dillard's request for help, I uh, plan on contributing $500 to the Ocoee Youth Council Scholarship Fund. And I'll talk to Sherry and make those arrangements. That's all. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Hart. Uh, thank you, sir. And I did also make a contribution to the Ocoee Scholarship uh, Fund. And I want to congratulate our graduates who will be graduating from Okoye High School. And I, as you celebrate your, your graduation, which is a tr tremendous accomplishment, I want you to celebrate responsibly. The last thing in the world we want is a great night to end in tragedy. So please celebrate responsible. This is, this is the beginning of a great, great life. We want to make sure you, we use judgment on that day. And once again, congratulations to the parents for raising outstanding children. Uh, on a serious note, as you know, I'm a pharmacist by trade, and over the last 34 years, I've seen a tremendous increase in the amount of uh, mental health issues in this country. Whether you accept it or not, we've been through a tremendous amount of stress in the last three years with COVID. Uh, isolation job loss, loss of life. I'm a minister, as you also know, we had so many funerals, the funerals were back, the graveyard was backed up. So we've been through a lot mentally. So I encourage you, as Mental Health Awareness Month is in May, take a self-evaluation of yourself. When you go to the doctor and you get your blood work and your blood pressure, ask the, check on your mental health. If you find yourself being isolated, not want to go around people, uh, getting stressed, trying to feel perfect all the time, you could be suffering from, from mental illness. And one out of five Americans suffer, suffer from mental illness. It's not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a stigma that if you're, especially for males, if you feel depressed or anxious, you're weak. Let me tell you something. Superman had kryptonite. Everybody has something to deal with, but the wise face it. So I encourage you to talk to your doctor, talk to someone, get the help you need. A safe, happy, healthy Okoye is what I want. I want the Okoye experience. I had a friend of mine who always said, people should be glad to see you come 
and sad to see you go. And when I want people to drive into a car, I want them to see that sign and say, hey, we're in a car, we're gonna have a great time. We went to the Cinco de Mayo uh, event the other day, had a great time. It's time to get out and celebrate, hang around people. We need each other. Humans are not, not, not individuals, we're, we're groups. We need to be together. My, my daughters and I always laugh wherever we go. My wife's a rock star. All the kids come up to her because she's a, a first grade teacher and she just talks to everybody and we just laugh because she's such a rock star. But we had a great time. And I, I hope we can do these more things in the future. We have a great setup. We have a great community. It's Florida. It's great weather. If it's not, it's going to change in 15 minutes. So give it a little time. It'll change. But we have a great opportunity to get together. Um, one other thing, uh, there's three things I think I've learned in my, my life that we don't, we can do a better job of. Number one, we need to appreciate our seniors. Number two, we need to appreciate our teachers. And number three, we need to appreciate our armed forces. My brother served in the Navy. I never had the opportunity to serve, but I have much respect for anybody who ever put that uniform on. And when he walked through the airport coming back from the Gulf War, I was amazed to see men 60, 70, 80 years old standing up and saluting him because of the brotherhood they had in the Navy. Freedom was never free. And I think we take it for granted because we've always had it. But somebody paid a high price for the freedom that we have today. So as we go into Memorial Day and we have our picnics and our celebrations, if you have a barbecue, remember Commissioner Hart, you can always call me. I'll come over and eat. That's great. But we need to take a little time to say thank you for those men and women who didn't come home, who paid the price on a beach and a ship and things that we don't know as Americans, and they paid the price for us. So I want to say thank you for their sacrifice, and the best thing we could do is exercise our freedom and never lose our freedom. God bless you, and thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thought this was going to be a four-week trip, but it gets like on Gilligan. You know, it was a three-hour trip, but it's going to be a little longer. I'm going to do the best I can to serve the community, and I thank you for the opportunity to serve. God bless you all. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. <clears throat> Christmas parade. I want to bring that up again for thoughts to come back on June the 6th with thought process of what to do with Christmas parade. We still have the other program. Still have the other program too, because uh, I've had a lot of people ask, so I'm just wanting to get the consensus of all the commissioners. Mary, do you want something official on the agenda for that? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Can we ask for Parks and Recreation yeah. director to be here? Yes. Uh, and we've already had some volunteers asked about it, so but we'll, we'll we just want to firm it up because that'll be June, and half the year ago. So, uh, I'll also be at the picnic at a, at the um, park, Freedom Park. Uh, I'll be out of town for Memorial Day on May twenty fifth. So, Commissioner Wilson, you'll be the gavel person. Uh, we were talking about a while ago. Oh, also, I contributed twelve hundred dollars out of my discretionary fund to the uh, youth council. So she needed a certain amount to make up to the amount. So I went ahead and give her the rest of it. So I, I told Sherry today. So, all right, closed street for monthly music. I was looking at the dates and trying to t talk about it. July 4th happens on a, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so I thought maybe if we could do something on June the 30th, have it for June Friday night, June the 30th. Or if you wanted to, we could move it to Saturday, June the 1st. But some people go out of town mm -hmm. like Saturday. But I thought if we could do a music, we'll find some people to do music on, on that and have some food. We need a little more food trucks there because, we, like you said, at that at Cinco de Mayo, we had a lot of people we didn't have. And the lines were long, mm -hmm. and people were having a hard time getting food. Right. So we need to allow for maybe a, a variety of mm -hmm. different kind. And, and have it. So I wanted to see if the city would go along with it and see if we could do like a June the 30th uh, and have a uh, close the street and have an open street with the music. Maybe we even put some chairs out for people to sit in and uh, uh, we'll start off with different, we'll find some kind of music to have and uh, let people have a kind of a pre July the 4th party without fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> so Consensus, everybody okay with that? Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. All right, I'll talk to the Recreation Department also. Um, once again, it's, it's just, uh, I think the uh, picking all the boards turned out, I think we're going to have a great system here with the boards. I think we'll get everything rolling. Um, if you set up a meeting for the diversity board, now that we've got the names, when will that be? 
We're going to look at the calendar because we need to set up meetings for charter review as well as the right. human relations diversity and that's, board. That's another thing. When, are, when is the charter review? We know yet when they um, will meet? I will meet with the facilitator. We need to come up with a schedule because there is a time, you know, a short timeline for charter review. So I, I do believe that's going to be more than just one meeting a month for them to get through. But I mentioned some of it could can... be two, but I mean, but all right. So we need to get that set too because I, I think, think in September we have to have yeah, once we have the dates for charter review, we can um, just confirm HRDV dates, whether it's the same Thursday or whether we have to look for right. another date. And uh, we'll um, be back on June the 6th, right? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have anything else before we close the meet, if you remember? No? Thanks for everybody being here. We'll see you June the 6th. See you Thursday. Thursday.